You think you're a sports fan? We've got the super fan, the Toronto Raptors super fan, Nav Batia, and he's also a super philanthropist. Nav, it is great to have you with us. Thanks for being here. Thank you. My pleasure. I know people who are watching will want to know, how are you navigating basketball during this time? I mean, you've been, you've well, attended every Raptors home game since 1995. What, what does, what's it been like to, to, to be a super it, fan during the lockdown? Well, it is, uh, but the thing is, super fan does understand that this is much more, more than basketball. This is, you know, my team, I wasn't able to attend the playoff games last year because they played in the bubble in Florida. Do I miss it? Yes, I do. But you know what? I am managing it. I do. I, I tell all the fans that, look, keep supporting them. I think the Raptors are a fan-driven organization, a fan-driven a team. I can assure you that last year when we lost that seventh game in the playoff to Boston, if the game was held in Toronto, I assure you that we would have never lost the game because our fans are such a strong. They are the best fans. Raptors of fans are the best in the world. Well, you know, one of the reasons that we're doing this video series now is to highlight not only what World Vision is doing, of course, but but other organizations. And you have your super fan, fan, super fan foundation, which is really uniting people through the love of sport. Tell us a little bit about the work of the foundation. You know, that one, that organization came at the same time, basically, when I joined uh, when I partnered with the World Vision, you inspired me through World Vision. And I said, well, we got to do the foundation and we are going to do the basketball courts so that the kids can uh, play basketball during the summertime and, uh, you know, put their energy in a positive way on that sport. You know, some people who are watching this may not know the program that you're supporting, which is called Rise Up Daughters of India. You've seen it firsthand. It's focused on gender equality, um, tell us a little bit about the issues around gender equality in your home country and what Rudy is doing well, to help tackle that. I believe that every kid, every kid deserves, doesn't matter if it's a girl or a boy, they deserve, they should have the hope to just enjoy the rights of education. And what you guys, uh, World Vision, when you came up with this program, Rise Up, the Girls of India, you know, program with the Daughters of India, it was a program which touched me very much because I know it. You know, I adopted a girl from India who was abundant, who couldn't go to school because they drop out at the age of 11 because there is no washrooms in the school. Till 11, they go out to the fields behind the bushes, behind the trees to relieve themselves. But when their period starts, they cannot do that. So they drop out because there's no washrooms in those schools. And you know what? Thanks to World Vision for giving me this opportunity to join you and build so many washrooms in 35 schools, I think, in Faridkot. You know, I'm so proud of World Vision, so proud of this organization, because I saw that they are, they do what they say. Whenever you are partnering with an organization, people say, oh, they, the most of the money is wasted on this and that. But to go to India with the World Vision people and meet the World Vision people there and see what our initial contribution had done gave me a lot of confidence. And we are going to do the same thing. Like I told you before, the, the, the girls' education and the basketball are important to me. Now, I'm so excited about our next project in Alwar, Rajasthan. Another very poor area. But there we are going to do the schools, but we are also going to do the basketball Sports. If the world has to grow, if the world has to be successful, if the humanity has to be successful, these young girls have to be educated. They are going in the grade 11 and 12 and after they graduate from the high school, hopefully some of them will continue going to universities and colleges. Some might do a diploma, some might do some other kind of a training and become. But in the end, these girls are going to get jobs and they're going to help their, their families. Poverty is the biggest disease and poverty breeds poverty. So we are going to, we are stopping World Vision 
and with me a little bit of a uh, contribution we are helping the poverty to go away and uh, bring these families to do better than they have been doing and uh, i believe that this is a such a such a full project which you had introduced me to it, to me and my family my daughter my wife we are a believer there may be a risk at times like this that we kind of look inward and we focus on the very legitimate needs in front of us here how do we keep remembering the needs of girls in india or in other parts of the world that are also affected by covid-19 or these kinds of restrictions what kind of message would you give to canadians to encourage them to have that broad understanding of how we can we can make a difference yes right now a lot of us a lot of canadians and a lot of the world is suffering but i believe people understand people basically are good at heart you know this is so important to continue and we are going to come very strong after this thing is over you make you will see that the love will be flowing you see what's happening in the world around you know what was happening and i believe now with all this thing going and uh, we are going to come closer the human humanity is going to love each other 